Under voltage 60, over voltage 90, well that would explain it. Alright, supposedly that did it. Green light now, that's good. Wow, that works much better than before. Alright, I've been really trying to avoid this, but I'm gonna have to deal with it. So I got this vibration going on in here when the motor's running. I'm about 90% sure it's this shaft hitting the tube that it's inside. Because, uh, alright, it comes up inside a tube here and this tube continues right up to where the motor is and the shaft goes right through that tube. Two problems. One, the tube, <clears throat> like the outer tube, we'll call it the outer tube and the shaft will be the inner tube. The outer tube is not super straight. It's pretty straight, but it curves a little bit like that. You know, I'm exaggerating with my hand. It's just a tiny bit, but it's enough that in the middle, the wall is really close to the inside tube, the propeller shaft. Now the second problem is the propeller shaft is also not perfectly straight. It is pretty close to straight. When it starts spinning, any amount of uh, bend will be amplified because there will be the centrifugal force pushing it out. So, it starts spinning, the, the tube hits the inside of the other tube, and that just causes more vibration and it just, you know. So, there's two things I can do about this, at least that I'm thinking of right now. One, I can straighten out the outer tube a little. Like maybe wedge something between this and that tube. That means I have to get inside there. And it's a sealed compartment. So that means maybe going through here, cutting a hole to where I can reach in and blah. That's going to be a pain in the butt. But I think I need to do that. The other thing I can do is put a bearing right in the middle. Because right now it's got a bearing at the bottom and it's got a bearing at the top, like way up here. So. If I put one in the middle, it would be totally, totally no problem. Now I could try doing that without fixing this tube at all. I would just have to make the bearing fit in offset a little bit. Which means I'm not going to put like a roller or ball bearings in there because there won't be space. But if I could do a copper sleeve and then just have it in a thing that's offset that fits in the tube. That would fix it. I just don't know how much heat is going to be generated by a stainless steel tube spinning in a copper tube. I know it's pretty smooth, but I don't, I don't know how smooth. Maybe I need to do a test. So the bearing, or I guess it's a bushing, it doesn't really need to do much. Just keep the vibration from starting up. Uh, it doesn't doesn't need to, you know hold any weight or anything like that. And I kind of need to take care of this now before I go trimming the propeller blades. Because, you know, I start with the propeller blades bigger than I think they need to be, and then I'll trim them down to where it's good. But if I trim them down, and then I fix the vibration, then suddenly I get all this power back that I was losing to the vibration, then I find out the propeller blades I come down too small, well, it's a lot harder to put the material back after you cut it off. So I need to figure out this propeller vibration before I mess anything else up. Here's a piece of brass that's too big. Uh, same pipe as the propeller shaft. Don't, don't do this. Mm.
can't feel much heat. Maybe a tiny bit warmer than when it started. And I did not oil it. No lubrication in there at all. So maybe I can get away with that. Hmm. Yeah, it doesn't seem to be heating up. That's kind of impressive. All right, I just tested that on high gear, which is 2,900 RPM. And the motor on the boat only goes up to 1,800 RPM. So, I think it'll be fine. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to try it. Yeah. If I can get the, the propeller shaft through this tube and this secured in there somewhere in a good spot, it should fix all the vibration. It'll be really nice to run quiet too because <laughs> no good. I have no idea what I'm doing here. Alright, now can I squeeze that into you? This is the size of the tube. Alright be able to stuff that down inside there oh maybe not easily but it'll fit and be nice and snug so it shouldn't move I gotta say I designed this pretty well in terms of maintenance it's pretty easy to get the motor out uh, yeah. and now I'm seeing how bad the problem is. So if I put the tube right in the middle of this tube, it's hitting the wall on this side somewhere down there. If I put it over here though, it doesn't hit. So maybe I should just screw this up, make it offset a little bit, you know, like four millimeters this way. It might actually be all right then couldn't make this thing fit offset I'd have to take out some of that I don't know all right if I stick the motor in here without this and just bend the thing it's sitting on and hold it to the side a bit I should be able to run it and at least see if that gets rid of the vibration Got my motor temporary hooked up. Let's see how this works now. Whoa, that's way smoother than before. Excellent. I think it was just asking too much of that pipe to span a meter and a half supported on each end but not in the middle and spin and stay not wobbly. Probably with a uh, solid shaft it would be no problem but the, the tube is it's a lot more flexible. The thing is I don't want to use a solid shaft because that will add like 40 pounds of weight so I, I want to keep the, the tube. But yeah this seems to seems to have fixed it. Now I need to remount the motor, offset, it's just a little bit, it's not very much from where it was. Hmm. Let's see, what can I do here? You might not be able to see much here. But... So the vibration was getting worse again, and I was like, what is going on? I thought I was getting this under control. So I was like, ah, forget it. I'm going to eat dinner. So I went to eat dinner, and like halfway through dinner, I'm like, just thinking about this, because it's bugging me, right? 
And I'm thinking maybe there's something stuck inside the tube. Or maybe the tube like has a weld line that's so unbalanced when it spins, it's like, oh, so I checked it. I checked another piece of the tube and it looks pretty smooth all the way down, like uniform wall thickness. And then I, I came over here and I was going to see if there was like some junk stuck up in the, the tube there that was like unbalanced. So I took the propeller off, you know, because it has a bolt that goes through it and uh, I have to be able to get something up there. So I took the bolt off and, you know, took the propeller off and I'm looking at the propeller and my daughter was here and she's like, what happened to your propeller? Because one of the propeller blades was folded like totally forward. And uh, I guess it was because it was spinning fast enough. It had enough power to actually bend one of them, which was good because then I bent it back and the, the vibrations seem to be mostly gone now. So nice. Oh, and I, I changed the way the, the propeller blades are a little bit now. So instead of, instead of being pretty flat they're a little bit flexed that way so it's harder to bend them you know kind of like a kind of like a pringles chip sort of yeah anyway bottom line it seems to be running pretty smooth now so i think i can take it out and do a test a for real test uh tomorrow the sun's almost down right now there is one thing I might want to change though. I may want to reprogram the speed controller to operate at a higher amperage. Because it's a 40 amp motor, and I told the speed controller cut off at 50 amps. But, you know, it's cutting off just as I'm getting to full throttle. So maybe I should just let it have a little more, or maybe I should trim off those propeller blades so I'm not overloading the motor. That'd probably